Hello and welcome to this next tutorial for UI Builder for Microsoft Access on setting up UI Builder. To begin with, we'll start with just the UI Builder Enterprise Edition. And these steps are much the same for the Business and Starter Edition. And I'll call out where the steps are slightly different for the Enterprise Edition. But effectively, you've got the main screen window here. And we'll click on Configure. Now the first thing you'll notice is you've got a General Settings tab. And in there, we've got the default display settings. I can enable this exit button down here by just checking or unchecking the box, as well as showing the company name on the menu. So if I uncheck it, you won't see the company name down here. You can, of course, change the application name, company name. But the things that are important are the start form here. So as we started it up, you saw the uh, UI Builder start form. But of course, you may decide you want to set it up to your own. So in this case, I've imported a donor tracking database, and so I'm going to set the start form to be the form member. So let's just click Apply Settings, and now you see that when the database starts up, in fact, it's going to show the members window. Go back to the configuration. If you want to set your own logo to display up here, that's be where you would do it. Uh, recommend that, of course, as opposed to uh, our default logo. You can also change the layout here. There's the large format, which are down at the bottom, as well as the smaller format, which are up at the top. And of course, you've got a left menu, a right menu, and then the menu on the top. So we'll just stick with the, the left menu for now. When we configure the buttons, the important thing is that uh, you've got a menu button text. So in this case, let's go ahead and uh, um, look at one of the forms we have available. You'll note in the button action field here, we've got many different actions you can choose. When we select open subform, that means it's going to open whatever form in this central area here. So now let's go ahead and say the first form that we might want to uh, choose is still the member form. So type that in. And the next one maybe is campaigns, where we want to uh, track information about campaigns. So I'll say that I want that to be a subform. Now note, you might want to have one of your forms open up so that it's in an add-only mode, which means that someone can add records, but they're not able to uh, delete or change existing records. Same with read-only. Uh, if you select that, it's going to open it up in a read-only mode. It should be more important when we talk about multi-user databases and the Enterprise Edition. So in this case, I've got my campaign form. And maybe I want to have another form for membership levels. And we'll leave it at that for now. So now if I want to see my changes, I just click Apply Settings. And now you can see I've got my different forms configured here in the menu. Let's go ahead and do the same with a submenu. So under the menu, um, so under the members section here, I'm going to click submenu. And then I see the edit submenu option appears, and I'll click that. Now in this case, we might want to set up one of our submenu options to be new record, in which case we want to have a new record button appear at the top in the submenu. Another one might be to uh, export. And we could say we want to export the uh, data um, in that table to Excel or to uh, or to a CSV file. And then you select what the data source is that you're going to be exporting. And lastly, maybe we want to create a reminder. So we'll just put a reminder there. And then for the business and enterprise editions, you could in fact create an Outlook task. So we'll leave it at that. Of course, you've got five different submenu buttons to choose from as well. Now when we click Apply Settings, click on the Members tab here. Now you'll see that the submenu has appeared. And of course, we can uh, click New Record, and it brings us to a new record. And reminder as an example, we've got the window here where we can very quickly create an Outlook task. You can hide and show the submenu right there. And just as a note, you can minimize or expand the main menu as well with that little uh, caret sign there. Now for the last step, let's talk about setting up your user level menus for the Enterprise Edition. First thing you want to do is establish a set of role-based menus. So you click role-based menus. 
and here you'll see a set of roles. And a role basically is a, a definition of a group of users that are all going to share the same settings. Now you'll note here we've established an administrator role and we've actually checked the administrator box. What does that mean? That means that you can share administrator privileges with other users when you set up a role and you check that box. What it means is that those users will be able to get into the administration forms for UI Builder. If that's not checked, then when that user attempts to open that form, they're actually going to get an error message that says they're not allowed into, let's say, the administration form or the uh, um, auditing forms. If you set it to be read-only, that's going to mean, but by default, whenever they open one of these menus options that you've established, they will only have read-only access to those sub-menu buttons. The alternate roles is also a neat feature and it's currently only covered in the user's guide. We won't uh, cover that here in the tutorial. Now the important thing is that for each of these roles they can have their own start form here. So you can say that for the business user you want them to start perhaps in the members form. And then you can define what does their menu look like so that when they start into the database what will they see. And let's say as an example maybe we only are going to let them see the members and we'll let them see campaigns but we're going to have that be a read-only feature and what that means is that they can see the campaigns in the database but they won't actually be allowed to modify them through the forms they can have their own submenus for each of these particular options. And as you'll note here, we don't have the configure button set up because that's really an administrative feature. So now that we've got the roles established, let's go ahead and look at the users. We've set a couple here. We've got the uh, um, S. Peterson is one person's Windows username and another is G. Washington. And as you can see here, G. Washington is set up as a business user. You could switch them to be an administrator and effectively you just set up as many users as you need to. We'll go back to manage roles though. We'll cover the uh, user level logins in more detail in a different tutorial. Here though you see the test role button and what this nifty feature does is allow you to actually switch between the roles to preview what they'll look like. So let's select a business user and say switch roles. And now as you can see the menu is different than what we had before. You've got the menu options for the business user. They're going to start in the members window and when we open the campaign notice down here that the little new record is gone and that's because they can't edit that record. So you've effectively set them up to have just read-only access to that information. And then we've got other menu options as well. Once I'm done and I want to go back to where I was, you click close and now it will return me back to the role that I started with and I can continue to edit these specific role menus. There's an unlimited number of roles. You can set up as many roles as you like. You could set up some roles to be associated with only one user or you could set up a role to be associated with many users. That concludes the tutorial for setting up UI Builder menus. Thanks for your time and enjoy using UI Builder.